Welcome back to Crazy Gamers Games. And today we are going to talk a little bit of tactics about an army I'll be trying out this weekend. Um, some of you may think it's a little cheesy, but I'm just going to try it out. It is Admech. Um, it has some custodies in it, and it has um, a little bit of Imperial Knights. So I'm just going to go over go over the list of what's in there and the point cost and then I'm going to talk about the tactics I'm looking at. Um, this has two battalions, a super heavy detachment and a supreme command attachment. In the first battalion I have a tech priest dominus and an engine seer. They're going to be Forge World Mars and then I have three groups of rangers. The first group is two rangers um, one Ranger Alpha, all with Galvanic rifles, and then two of the Rangers and that the other two, last two of the Rangers in that group will have the Transonic Arquebuses, and then the next group of Rangers is one Ranger Alpha with a Galvanic rifle and five Skatari Rangers, just with Galvanic rifles, and the third troop choice for that. First battalion is another group of Skatari Rangers, five of them, all with Galvanic rifles. All of the Rangers come in at 142 points, and the two HQs come in at 120. And then for the next battalion, it is another Admech battalion. It is Forge World Mars. It is ran also by Tech Priest Dominus and an Engine Seer. And it has three groups of vanguards, uh, five vanguards in each group. Um, the alphas have the radium carbines, and they all they all have radium carbines. That comes in at 128 points, and then again 120 for the the HQs. And then next is my super heavy detachment. It is household Tyrannus. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And it consists of one Helvrin, two Armager Warglaives, and a Crusader with the Avenger Gatling Cannon and the Rapid Fire Battle Cannon. He's my Warlord. He's going to have the Iron Bulwark trait, and he's going to have the Relic Endless Fury to replace his Avenger Gatling Cannon. And then finally, my Supreme Command Attachment, which would normally give you one CP, but I spent that CP, is three Shield Captains on Don Eagle Jet Bikes. The first Shield Captain, I spent one CP to give him the Relic, the Akura Aquilus, and he has a Hurricane Bolter in a Miseraconda. And then there's, a, then there's two other Shield Captains on Don Eagle Jet Bikes, each with Hurricane Bolters and then the Misery. Cordia. So that that's the entire army. It's exactly 2,000 points. So I want to go over um, some strategies and the units real quick. Um, the Tech Priest Dominus is just using a Volkite Blaster and a Macro Stubber. I tried to keep the Admech as cheap as possible, mainly for um, the CP. So the Dominus, one Dominus is going to hang out with the Crusader in the back and, you know, try to heal that one wound each turn. Um, also with the Helvrin. And then I'm going to send another Tech Priest Dominus up with the Warglaives. And then I also um, think I'm going to get a little bit of combat-y, shooty action with the, with the Jet Bikes. So we get the Dominus. We got the Rangers. You know, they have, you know, 30-inch range, rapid fire one, and then two of them have the transonic arquebus. So I could maybe pick off some characters from range. And then we got the Vanguard with the Radium Carbine. That's a 18-inch range assault three. I attempted to use the new Tech Priest Manipulus to increase the range on these radium carbines by three, but the points weren't there, so I went with an engine seer instead. So that's that's basically the Admech army, the tech priest, and then the rangers and the vanguard. Now the crusader is in the Admech book. There he is, the crusader. Um, like I said, he has an, uh, um, the Endless Fury 
Gatling cannon, I'll look up that in the night book. But the rapid fire battle cannon, 72 inches, heavy 2d6, strength 8, negative 2 AP, d3 damage. He also has the heavy stubber, heavy 3, 36 inches, strength 4, no AP, 1 damage. Um, I believe the Avenger Gatling Cannon has a heavy flamer, which is 8 inch, heavy D6, strength 5, negative 1 AP, 1 damage, and is a flamer, so it automatically hits. If he gets into a fight, he can fight with his Titanic feet, which will give him 3 hit rolls instead of one for his attack so he'd be you know stomping for 12 dice so if they do come in deep strike whatever you know i could i can step on them i can also move in and out of combat if there's infantry so i don't have to i can do that fall back shoot and still charge so let's take a look at And uh, with Forge World Mars, um, I get to pick, I get to roll two dice um, when picking the Canticles of the Omnissia. So, it's rolled two dice and I get the two. I don't get to modify it because I don't have call. But there's a stratagem in here. Yeah, the Machine Spirit Resurgent, it's 1 CP, and it says use this stratagem at the start of any turn. Pick an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle or Quester Mechanical unit from your army. Until the end of turn, use the top row of the model's damage table, regardless of how many wounds it has left. This ends immediately if the model is reduced to zero wounds. So, you know, I can bring them back up to full strength. And see, there was another one. Um, Benevolence of the Omnissiah uses this stratagem when an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle or Questus Mechanicus model from your army suffers a mortal wound. Roll a d6 for that mortal wound and each other mortal wound inflicted on this model for the rest of the phase on a 5 plus you know he can ignore that mortal wound so if I'm going up against some psychers drop a CP um, this build is 18 CP but I did spend one so 17 CP going into it um, and also I can spend 1 CP for machine spirit revenge and well, no, that's just for Adeptus Mechanicus. That's not for Titanic units. Thought I could make them blow up. I think there is one in the Imperial Knight Codex where you can roll and on a 4 plus, they automatically explode for 1 CP. So let, let's check out the Knights here. And we'll look up first. We have the Helvrin. It's got um, the Armager Auto Cannons. It's heavy 2d3, and it has two of those. So it's 4d3. Um, it ignores the penalty for moving for this heavy weapon. It's strength 7, negative 1 AP, and 3 damage. I love these little Helvrins. They're just fantastic. Um, I believe I picked one for this unit. Yeah, one Helvrin. And then there's two of the Warglaives. They're going to have the the heavy Stubbers, you know, which is heavy 3, 36 inch, but he's going to face a penalty for moving. Um, it's got the Thermal Spear, which is Assault D3. And when it's at half range, you roll two damage dice and you pick the highest result. And it's strength 8, negative 4 AP, and it's D6 damage. And then it has a Reaper Shade Cleaver. It has two different profiles. A Strike, which is times 2 strength, negative 3 AP, and three to flat 3 damage. And then it has a Sweep, which is user strength of 6, negative 2 AP, 1 damage. But you make 2 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of 1. So you get 8 attacks with the Sweep for 1 damage each, or you can just do 4 attacks at 12 strength, negative 3 AP, 3 flat damage for each one. So, now, with the Crusader, 
we've went over these weapons now let's talk about the relics and the warlord trait here well let's first talk about the household so I gave him household Tyrannus roll a dice each time a model with this household tradition loses a wound unless unless that wound was lost as a result of a mortal wound on a six the wound being rolled is not lost so you know six up feel no pain on um, all my knights which I'm happy about and then um, like I said I spent um, I, I made him my warlord so he gets a relic and his warlord trait is iron bulwark your warlord has a four up invulnerable save against range weapons so he goes from a five up to a four up and then the relic is endless fury um, model with an avenger gatling cannon only endless fury replaces the bearer's avenger gatling cannon has the following profile it's got a 36 inch range heavy 14 six strength negative two ap and a flat two damage and it says each unmodified hit roll of six made with this weapon scores two hits instead of one and that straight hits it doesn't you don't have to re-roll them like with some other um, factions so that that covers the knights now let's take a look at the shield captains on their Dawn Eagle bikes here. I just got this codex in, so I haven't had time to mark the pages with tabs. Okay, here it is, a shield captain on a Dawn Eagle jet bike. It has a movement of 14, two plus weapons a ballistic stale toughness five or strength five toughness six seven wounds five attacks nine leadership and two saves and it is armed with a interceptor lance his jet bike is equipped with hurricane bolters which i kept standard their rapid fire six uh, 24 inch range strength four one flat damage interceptor lance gives you plus one strength so strength six negative three ap and it's d3 um, damage and you can reroll failed wound rolls with this weapon on a turn in which the bearer made a successful charge and then it has the misericorda which is a melee user strength of five negative two ap one damage each time the bearer fights it can make one additional attack with this weapon unless it is equipped with a storm shield which it does not it has Aegis of the Emperor. Let's just look that up real quick. Aegis of the Emperor. Models with this ability have a 5 up invulnerable save. In addition, roll a d6 each time. This model with this ability suffers a mortal wound in the psychic phase. On a 6, that mortal wound is ignored. So if I'm playing against, you know, a lot of psychers like. It, thousand suns um i put my shield captains out there first maybe ahead of them and they don't they can roll off their mortal wounds instead of my knights taking them um they are characters they have fly they're bikers um they have inspirational fighter you can reroll hit rolls of one made for friendly adeptus custodians units within six inches of this model so he's re-rolling ones because he is a model and then he has Implaceable Vanguard. When this model advances, add six to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a die. So he gets a flat 20 move if you advance. You don't have to roll to see what the advance is. So there will be three of them. And uh, let me talk about, I spent a CP um open the vaults use the strategy before the battle your army can have one extra relic for one cp two extra relics for three cp all the relics of terra that you include must be different and given to different adeptus custodians characters you can only use the strategy once per battle so i um let's see where's the relics at here 
So I gave the first shield captain um, Urix Aquilus is for a biker model only. This model has a three up invulnerable save. In addition, you could reroll failed charge rolls made for this model. So my um, my main um, shield captain, he will have that relic and the other two shield captains are just standard. So, and uh, with the 17 command points, I will have a plethora of stratagems that I can choose from either for rotating iron shields on my knights or doing a variety of things with the with the jet bikes but um, if you have any comments leave them in below tell me what you think of um, this army build and um, like subscribe all that good stuff for crazy gamers games I'm the crazy gamer have a great day